Hi, my name is Jennifer Franchak and I'm a certified transformational nutrition coach and a certified nutritional therapist. And I just wanted to continue um, telling my story about uh, what happened to me in the past year, year and a half um, with my health. So it's been quite a journey and I started to talk to you about it um, in part one, my video in part one. And um, I just want to continue the story today and just share a little more with you. If something resonates with you and if something, um, if you've gone through something similar, I'd love to hear about it. Please share in the comments below. As I said at the end of the last video, one, one of the big takeaways that I want you to take away from this is that it's so important to be aware of your body, be aware of, of your body's signals, what's normal, what's not normal, and advocate for yourself. Um, you are your best advocate. You know your body best. You know what's normal, you know what's not normal. And you know, doctors are, are extremely knowledgeable and they're here to help us, but you know your body best. So you need to, um, if something's happening that, that's not normal, then you need to advocate. You need to go to see a doctor and um, do your research and, and um, try, to, try to find out what's going on. And I'm so thankful that I did that because um, as you find out more about my story, you'll you'll see that it was a really good thing that, that I went to the doctor, I got things checked out. So in the last video where I left off, I was talking about the fact that I was in the emergency room in the hospital and I was being told that I needed, that I had possibly had a giant aneurysm um, in my brain and um, that I might need an emergency craniotomy, which is when they cut your skull open and go into your brain, um, which sounds really scary, sounded really scary to me. Um, and then I was told that prior to this, they wanted to do a cerebral angiogram. I spent a pretty tense night in this tiny little room in the emergency, off like right in the emergency room with my husband. I mean, I didn't really sleep. I was hooked up to all these wires and monitors. All night, you know, there were people right outside the door that were moaning and crying and, you know, because it was it's an emergency room. Um, and it was scary, you know. Um, I mean, the whole situation was scary, but that added like another layer of it, <laughs> another layer to it. Um, but thankfully, we had a room, you know. So, um, so yeah, it was a pretty intense night. Neither of us really got much sleep. Um, I did a lot of praying and I just have to say that um, I am a Christian, you know, and then God was with me the whole time and the Virgin Mother was with me the whole time. And honestly, I, I sincerely believe that um, they brought me through this and through this whole journey, through this whole year. And um, without without their help, I, I don't know if I would be here today um, or if I would be in as good of a state as I am right now. So yeah, I did a lot of praying that night. The following day, I had to wait. Um, they originally were going to schedule this angiogram in the evening, which would mean I'd have to wait all day, you know, in the hospital to get this done. But thankfully I have a good friend who is a doctor at that hospital and she was amazing. Um, she came to visit me multiple times. She's super, just super amazing person. Um, and she was able to push to get my angiogram moved up to an earlier time, which I was very thankful for. But to do this procedure, they have to put you under general anesthesia. I don't think it's considered a surgery per se, but it's, you know, it's invasive. It's very invasive, but it's a very short procedure. Um, I met my neurosurgeon, so it's my, I have a neurosurgeon that did the procedure. Um, he was great. He was really helpful and he kind of went through the different scenarios with me and explained this is what we're looking for. This is what we're hoping to rule out. This is what's going to happen potentially if it is a giant aneurysm. Um, so it kind of helped me to prepare a little. So they did the um, angiogram and when I woke up from the anesthesia, they said, you know, good news. It's not um, a giant aneurysm. You know, you don't have to worry about it. It's not a giant aneurysm. So I was like, oh, thank God. Like, I'm just, thank you. I'm so thankful that this is not what it is. Um, so um, <laughs> coming out of the, um, that procedure was actually pretty intense for me because my husband had to leave. Like I had mentioned after the procedure, he went home. He's like, are you okay? At that point, I, I wasn't assigned to a room yet. So I was still in this kind of like general um, post-surgery post room 
where they keep like all these patients and they just have like a little curtain between the, the hospital beds. So after this procedure, um, they require you to lay flat on your back. Like you can't really move. I couldn't like turn and lay sideways or get comfortable. You have to lay flat on your back. I think it's, I think it's for four hours. Um, and then they slowly start to sit you up. Um, and so I was like in agony because my tailbone was hurting. Like my back was hurting. Like I just, you know, my mouth was dry and like, you know, there, there are nurses there, but they're preoccupied because there are people coming out of surgery and they're taking care of everybody. And, you know, I had some really, really great nurses who were super kind, super attentive, but they, you know, they didn't want me to eat anything until this four hour period was over and I could sit up and they make, they could make sure that I was okay. Um, so I was like really hungry, really thirsty and a little nauseous. I think I was really nauseous too from all the anesthesia. Like I just don't tend to do well with that stuff. I get a lot of nausea. Um, so, you know, four hours pass and they came over and they were like, okay, we can start sitting you up. So I start to sit up and initially I felt okay. And you, you know, you wouldn't think it's a big deal just to like sit up, you know, slowly, but I think it has to do with blood pressure. So. I sit up and they're like, okay, we're gonna get you a menu, you know, for the hospital and you can pick out what you wanna eat for dinner. So I'm sitting up for a few minutes, I'm looking at the menu and all of a sudden I got super nauseous and I started like, I don't know if you've ever passed out in your life. I have a couple of times, so I'm familiar with the feeling. So I started getting this feeling like I was gonna pass out, like, you know, just dizzy and like everything was like dimming and like I could tell my hearing, like, you know, it's, it's almost like you're starting to lose your hearing. It's like a really weird and creepy feeling. And so I just, I remember I could barely get my voice out and I'm just like, I need help. I need help. I need help. And like, so they all ran over, like a couple of nurses ran over and I guess my blood pressure dropped to 30, which is really, really low. Um, and they were all panicking because like a whole team ran over and um, there's like a, a neurologist on call and he ran over and he was applying pressure to like where they had inserted the catheter. But it was just really scary because they're like yelling, her blood pressure's at 30 and they're like applying pressure and this whole team of people around me. And, um, and after that, like, I guess once they stabilized me, they were just like, okay, you're gonna have to lay still for another four hours. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, how am I gonna do this? And like, there's no, you know, I'm, again, I'm in this recovery room no TV, like no, I can't read a book. I can't look at my phone. Like there's just like nothing I can do other than just like lay flat on my back. And my, you know, tailbone again was like killing me. So, um, that was rough. So finally, I think it was, um, maybe like, I don't know, eight o'clock at night after like finally that four hour, I could just like, I was facing, my bed was facing the clock. So I just was watching the clock the whole time. And, um, I couldn't sleep and people, you know, there were a lot of people around me coming out of recovery and moaning and just, you know, it's just a big sensory overload experience. Um, so I guess at that point, like as my time, my four, my next four hour time was like going by, they, they decided they wanted me to have an MRI. So this guy came and rolled me down to get an MRI. But again, like, you know, you're in an MRI and you know you have to lay there for about 40 minutes again like flat on your back so i just like got to the point where my like my tailbone was killing me it was like excruciating like i know things could have been worse you know and i know people go through a lot worse but it just felt excruciating because i just was like laying in the same position for hours and hours and hours i think you know it was total it was over eight hours you know and i couldn't move and just like my body hurt so bad um, so I had to get this MRI because they wanted to um, check on some other things or maybe get like a clear another picture because they because they ruled out the aneurysm. But then they were trying to think, OK, here are the possibilities of what it could be. We know there's something there. So they had me get the MRI um, to get another picture or more pictures. Um, so I think it was like around nine o'clock when I finally got a room. They put me in a, in a hospital room and um, thankfully I had it to myself. That was, you know, I, it was nice to have a room to myself, but I was so terrified of like sitting up because I didn't want that to have that experience again. Cause it was kind of, it was traumatizing, you know, to almost pass out and then your blood pressure drops that low. Um, so I had a really kind, um, nurse's aide, or I guess it was a nurse's aide, 
Um, and he like kept saying, okay, are you ready to sit up? And I'm like, no, we'll just like, so I, I kept moving my bed up. You know, it's one of those bed hospital beds that you can just automatically move up. And I just kept moving it up like one increment. And then I would wait like 20 minutes and then another increment. And I, I would wait like 20 minutes. And so finally I was like sitting all the way upright and I waited a while and I'm like, okay, like, okay, this is like, I'm okay. Like this is working. I'm not going to pass out. Um, and it's, it's just funny how, when you go through an experience like this, like you look at something that tiny, like sitting up as like a huge triumph. You're like, yes, I sat up like, you know, like I'm not passing out. And it's just, it, it just changes your perspective, like on everything, you know? Um, so I was finally able to like eat a meal at like, you know, nine 30 at night and, um, like just why or I think I don't even know if I ate a meal I think they didn't even have meals like I think I had some crackers or something that I ate and I watched a little tv I was able to get a little sleep but again I'm hooked up to all these IVs and whatnot so every time like you roll over or move positions you're beeping it's just you know if you've been to the hospital it's really hard to sleep there I think it was the next day um the neurosurgeon came in to talk to me and basically um, what he said was, we, we were pretty sure, like, I forget, he might have given me a percentage of how sure he was, but like, pretty sure, not 100%, but pretty sure that what you have is called a cavernous malformation. Some people call it a cavernous angioma. Some people just call it an angioma. Some people call it a cavernous malformation. There's like a few names for it. But he's like, we're pretty sure this is what you have. And it's nothing to be concerned about. Um, it's not like a tumor or anything like that, but basically what a cavernous malformation is, is a cluster of irregular blood vessels and they are all tangled up. So they've, they've, um, they've like grown and formed in a way that's not natural and they're, they're leaky. They're prone to leaking blood. So instead of like a stroke where you have like a major, um, you know, like a major leakage of blood that can cause you major problems, um, like, you know, slurred speech or paralysis or those kind of things. It's like, you know, for me, it was like, I have these little blood vessels that are like leaking blood, but not in huge amounts. So I was very relieved when he said that it most likely is not cancer. It's not, it doesn't look like a tumor, but this is what we think it is. So I, my husband came and he picked me up and I was pretty beat up, like feeling really beat up after just the whole procedure and everything that happened. I was tired and like I had a huge like bruise, you know, in my groin area, not to be, not to give you too much information, but it was like this big, like it was just for, for weeks, you know? So I just felt weak and tired, but I would just remember being so thankful, walking, walking through the doors, coming home, go, like A, going in my own bed and B, knowing like, oh my gosh, I'm still alive. Like I don't have an aneurysm that's going to burst at any moment. Like I, I'm, I'm okay. Like, you know, and when my kids came home from school, I just felt so thankful to see them and they were so excited. So that was really good. I mean, again, I think anytime you go through a health crisis or any type of situation like this, um, it just gives you a whole new perspective and it gives you so much gratitude. Like um, you know, you, you realize, oh my gosh, all these things that I've, I've been complaining about and get irritated with, are, is it really worth it? You know, like you, it puts everything in perspective. I know I keep saying that, but I just feel like that's the best way to say it. And again, if you take anything away from this video, as I said in the beginning of the video, be aware of your body, be aware of what your body's telling you, be an advocate for yourself and try to, I, I know this, this sounds so like... I know this, everybody's saying this these days, so I don't want to be inauthentic, but it's true. Like try to cultivate some sort of gratitude for what you have. I struggle with that. Um, I tend to get caught up in like, oh my gosh, you know, this happened today and that happened today. But then when I think about everything that I went through this past year, it helps me to remember all the things that I need to be grateful for. So try to cultivate some sort of gratitude and think about all of the good things in your life. Um, and I will be back with part three soon. So I hope you have a great day.